Yo. Hey. Can you hear me? You listening to Hashtag WAW. What a week. Welcome to another edition of Wow, What a Week. There's a fan we have, Sbusiso. He says the sound we play really entertains him. We're not quite sure which one he was talking about because we like to make a range of sounds that engage and inform. So let's get straight into making more appealing audio and visuals. Welcome back to Wow, What a Week. This is Wow, What a Week. What a Week. Celebrity guest. Celebrity guest. When I first met her almost 20 years ago, I never thought I'd be referring to her as my celebrity guest, more so because she believes Madiba is the last remaining celebrity we had in this country. When it comes to sports info, she's not a person who's easily stumped. She's been known to beat other presenters to the post and has made many envious with the goals she's achieved. She's a media person who doesn't just stop at the final whistle and has more reporting milestones than you can shake a stick at. So before I run out of more sporting puns and my producer hits me with a bat, or she hits me for a six, please join me in giving a wild welcome to Mpo, my boy. My boy. <laughs> well, I'm impressed. What's up, my dog? So punny. <laughs> Dude, my dog. I'm good, how are you? What's up? What's up? You know the, the last time I saw you, I was married. You know the last time I saw you, I was married. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Maybe other marriages are a thing, but we have to be in the same vicinity. Yes. Or marriage was never a thing. Yeah. I don't know which is which. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put these away. Okay, cool. Because I, I'm not enjoying hearing. So I've got laryngitis, or I had laryngitis. So okay. I'm busy Clearing. Um, busy treating my larynx. Yeah. Uh, because apparently I speak too loudly over uh, loud music. So oh, I yell and I scream and oh yes. eh. okay. But also I get it. There's also those moments where sometimes, <clears throat> and then you lose your voice. It's, not, it's, not, it's, <laughs> I, it's never happened no, to you. Never, no. Okay. <laughs> Can't relate. <laughs> You're not married. No. Lessons from not being married. Um, I now know what it is I want in a relationship. Okay. When I get into a relationship, I know what works for me, what doesn't work for me. Um, I know what my um, what makes me happy? So you didn't know going in? I did, but I I was okay with compromising. Oh, yes, a yes, lot yes, of yes, myself. yes, yes. And often we do that. Yes. Uh, often yes. we, there's almost a fit in or F off exactly. thing that creeps into a relationship. Exactly. So and I'm often, now at a point where I, my, my break points are my break points. Mm. My non-negotiables are my non-negotiables. Mm. You either fit in with me or you ship out. It's okay. Or we learn to live with the way we both are. I'm not at that point yet. <laughs> Which is why I'm still single. <laughs> no, no, but what I mean is this is who you are. Yes. And, and I think the, 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 the big mistake we make is with the saying, someone is your better half. Yeah. As opposed to this is a full entire human being. Of course. There's another full entire human yes. being. Where can you intersect, build something together? That is true. Without losing the essence of who who you are. That is true. And often, sadly, it's women who make that, comp uh, that compromise. That is very true. And that's one of, that's become another big lesson for me, mm. that men are unapologetically selfish yes. with what makes them happy, what their interests are, what they will and will not do, even in a relationship. We have the confidence of a white male. Oh, yeah, that, that, uh, the audacity. <laughs> I know, audacity, you have it in spades, sham. So, yeah, that's been another thing. So, I'm also learning to be and I don't necessarily want to use the word selfish, mm. but I guess that is the word. I'm, I'm selfish. You will be called selfish because women often expect it to be the ones that bend turn over the other cheek, bend over backwards and yeah. frontwards. <laughs> and, 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 and sadly, because society has made it what is expected of women. That is true. Versus how can we both bring out the best in one another that is without true. me having to dim my light. Exactly. Yes, there are moments where you might want to dim your light just for a moment, mm. but it mustn't be who I become. That's true. And it's so sad because as you say that, it's something I have observed of women who choose themselves and get out of marriage. Mm. Have you noticed how every female personality who's decided to get divorced mm. gets vilified for making that choice? Mm. Whereas there are countless other men who've gone, taken the same journey, mm. but no one cares. It's like, no. oh, okay, you got divorced, so what? Mm. But, and I'm sorry to name names, and Entle, and Mini, and myself, 
you will get vilified for choosing yourself. Even Unati at some point was vilified for taking that choice, for so, making that choice. Do you get what I mean? What's the craziest you heard about yourself oh, I've on heard that so journey? Many. No, oh. on that journey. I've heard so many. Mm. The biggest one is that I'm a gold digger. Hibana. I'm like, I've been waking up at four o'clock in the morning for so many years. I don't know, a gold digger who wakes up at four o'clock in the morning to go dig in other people's minds, unless if you are uh, working coastal water. Maybe. When I met you in 2000, what, three, four? Four. You were working. Yes. You were an IT girl. Always been working. You were an IT girl driving yes. a very, very, very nice car. <laughs> I've always been You've that working never girl. stopped working. Never stopped. So where were you digging gold? I have no idea. When you had your own gold mine. But you see, that is the misconception or the 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 preconceived notion of why women get married in the first place. Mm, People mm. assume that women get married only for financial gain as opposed to it's love. You know, you get married mm. to somebody because you love them. But ugh, you know what? I've just come to be like, it's okay. Mm, it's fine. Mm. My mind is big enough for me to mine in it every day anyway. Where do you think culture lets you guys down? Um, that's another thing that I've actually come to realize. Mm. So when I was going through the most, I remember having a conversation with Dr. Brian Mate and he said to me, listen, um, when you are female, especially a black female within mm. the black culture, sure. you will always be vilified for anything that has to do with a man. Sure. When you get married and something happens to your husband, you are always the first person blamed. You're the person of interest. Do you get mm. what I mean? Mm. Your, your husband passes away. It's your fault because you wanted insurance money. If your husband passed away while you're overseas, where were you when you passed away? Thank you very You'll much. Never win. <laughs> so you will always get blamed for anything that has to do with a man. So the mm. sooner you make peace with that, the better for you. Mm. And and I think that the, that was the perfect thing he could have said to me mm. because it literally just put me at ease with everything. And I was like, you know what? It is what it is. I am. I'm not an anomaly mm. in terms of what happens with regards to black culture and women. Mm. You just happen, it, it just happens to be happening to you in the public space. How do you raise your boy to think differently in a society that expects us to do certain things? I mean, a lot of, especially black people, yeah. still raise their sons to be, this is what a man does. Oh, yeah. Something as simple as cooking, which is a basic life skill. Oh, yeah. You will die if you don't eat. <laughs> you will die. This is true. It's a basic life skill. This is but true. But th there are still families where a boy is not allowed to be in the kitchen because apparently you'll become feminine. No. Why are you cooking? I've never how, how do you raise your boy in a society like that? I've personally never advocated for that mm. purely because I feel that... The moment we have gender normative roles, mm. that's where the problem comes. Mm. So, Kontlung, he has his chores. Sure. When he comes in from school, no sure. one's going to wash your lunchbox for you. Mm. You know, mm. Even though there is a helper there, that's part of your chores. You will make your bed in the morning. Sure. No one gets to go to wherever they're going mm. with mm. an unmade bed. Mm. So those are just the little things in how you treat your child as a human being first sure. before they are male or female. Mm. And mm. also, you know, in this day and age, some of them don't even, uh, what is it? Um see themselves as male or female anyway. Sure. So let's learn to so already treat... So dealing with that. Do you get what I mean? <laughs> so treat your children as human beings first. Mm, gender, mm. gender. the streets will teach them gender anyway, with or without your approval. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, you know, remember, you know, it's a conversation we had with uh, my then wife. Yeah. Just in terms of, as much as I hate making the bed, it was important that Lefika, who's now eight, sees me making the bed. Of course. So that he understands that it's not a woman's role. Exactly. You know what I mean? And yeah. I remember the first time he saw me making the bed, he's like, yeah, you're making the bed. <laughs> like, we all make the bed. Yes. And 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 we made him understand that our rule is last out of bed makes the bed. Oh, hell yes. That's why sometimes like that. on the Sunday morning, even hangover, I make sure I leave the bed first and I go nap on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a you thing to do though. That is such a you thing to do. My gosh. So I go nap on the couch. It's like, you'll make the bed when she gets the out of The more things change, the more they stay the same. <laughs> Listen, I'm a strategist and yeah. it worked. Yes, yes, It worked. Yes. Thank no, you very no, much. No, I, no, I, I see it. Speaking of childhood, let's yeah. let's talk about some of your fond childhood memories. Um, what was your favorite car as a child? Because I know you're a car freak. Um, my what, favorite... what was the go-to car in your childhood? My favorite car growing up was... I think in my teens, that's when I started noticing cars. Mm. Uh, Avura was just the thing, you know, uh, a VRC, a VR, um, 
para quem é? é, é a VR6 aqui. Yes, a VR6. A VW, VR6, VR, yes. VR6 yes. é, é, é CLI, mm. um, had to be bottle green, you know? Oh, wow. You know? So those... And, and, and your first car was a white golf. <laughs> yes, a white golf. That's what I went for. Because that was a, a box that I needed to take. Oh, yes, I've always yes. felt like, for instance, there are brands that are... Um, rites of passage, mm, especially when mm, you grew up in the township. Sure. So a VW is just one of those rites mm, of passages. Mm. Um, right now, the car I really would like is a Gush. Mm. If someone would just donate a Gush to me. And, it's, and, 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 and it's amazing how the Gusheshe costs... Uh, over a million, right? Yeah. yeah. Insane. But it's because it is... It's such an iconic car. It's iconic. It's got a cult status. Yes. And Kikusheshe. Exactly. Huh? Exactly. Fondest childhood memory that to this day haunts you because it's that fond. <sighs> Actually, I have no idea. Mm. I was that kid that was so naughty. Mm. Um, stealing the Berkisi, stealing peaches, go next door. That was me. I was that kid that always played around with the boys and not the girls. Oh, yes. Um, so I remember once having um, a bit of an altercation with my sister. <laughs> and she says to me, yeah, your problem is that the Shiban. And I was literally like, huh? What do you mean? But even then, it was just because that was my personality. Mm, it still mm, is my personality. Mm. I still feel more at home amongst men than I do amongst females. Sure, sure. It's something I'm trying to change, but it's such a difficult thing to do. So you've been ready for sports casting since you were a kid then? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, definitely. My my dad has been an avid boxing fan sure. forever. So he would be waking up at like three, four in the morning to watch boxing. Mm. And then on Sundays, Saturdays, you're watching the game. Um, so sports broadcasting is... In fact, I've always wanted to be a broadcaster. Sports broadcasting is what I kind of fell into. Mm, but in terms mm. of the broadcasting space, yeah, that, 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 that bite bit a long time ago. Your fondest either punishment or beating that was worth it from your childhood? Because you know that beatings where you're like, I earned it, but it was worth it. I don't know about being worth it, but yeah. I remember the one that's always haunted me mm. is getting punished for something that I hadn't done. Your... Being such a naughty child, sure, sure. everything was just, you know what, mm, whatever. It, it must be her. But mm. this particular time, I remember saving up so much money um, to go buy, and I think that's why I'm not domesticated till today. Mm. I'd wanted to buy a sewing kit. Sure. Saved up money, went to go buy the sewing kit with the embroidery, needles and whatnot. And... I got in trouble because apparently there was money missing and automatically it was assumed that I had used that money mm. to go buy this kit. Mm. And I remember cry I was so hurt mm. because, you know, when you're thinking this was the very first time I decided to do the right thing. Sure. And even when I do the right thing, mm. I still get into trouble. Mm. So that was the one punishment till today that I'll never forget. You know, it's weird because I'm doing therapy once a week. Yeah. And one of the memories from my childhood that... And you have a memory of an elephant, eh? I do, I do. That <laughs> keeps coming back yeah. is precisely what you're talking about. I remember, I think I was 15. Mm. My mom was studying in the US. Yeah. And I wanted her to get me a pair of British night sneakers. Mm -hmm. And I think at the time they were $300. Yeah. And at the time the rand dollar was, I think, two to one. Ah. So I needed to raise 600 bucks mm. to send to my mom. Mm. And... Incidentally, 600 bucks went missing from my dad's suit pocket and he thought it was me. I mean, so I came home from the boarding house um, because I wanted to go home and eat better food. <laughs> and because my boarding school was 10 minute walk from the house. But yeah. that's a story for another day. Yeah. And I remember my dad slapped me because the money was missing. Yeah. And I've never forgotten that day. You see. And, 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 and I remember... The, that school holiday, I spent it at my friend's house. Yeah. Because I was like, I'm not going to spend a holiday in, the, in a house with this man. Yeah. Who slapped me for something I didn't do. And the saddest part is, even though you keep explaining that it wasn't me, I didn't do it. Yeah. You, it's like no one believes you. Nobody believes you. No one believes you. And it doesn't help that the exact amount of money I'd been asking for to get these sneakers was the exact amount of money that went missing. Crazy, right? <laughs> and I'm sure somewhere my auntie from the 80s is here rubbing her hands. <laughs> Some I ate that money. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, it is it is very sad. So even now, yeah. when I do punish my kids, I try and say, let's let's talk it out. Oh yeah. If it is a case that, you know, mistaken identity, maybe mm. there's only two of us in the house. But anyway, yeah, maybe mistaken, the, the eat some all's just disappear. You know what I mean? Let's let's give the benefit of the doubt. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You've also gone through therapy. Yes. And I'm almost certain your childhood is a <laughs> recurring theme. It is. Because what I'm learning is a lot of adults that are broken, semi-broken, that even seem normal, yeah. have an inner child that is crying. Oh, of course. And often the bad decisions we make is that inner child. Yes. Um, some of the good decisions we make is that inner child still. Yeah. How's your inner child healing? My inner child is healing day by day yeah. um, because I'd actually also learned that my driving force to getting married was because of the inner child. Oh, yes. Because um, you must tick that box. You know what I mean? Yes. Outside of ticking that box, I think yeah. for me, it was because my the child in me had always wanted or had this dream of wanting to raise my children in a home with a mother and a father. Oh, yes. So come hell or high water, mm, that mm, was going to mm. happen. You know what I mean? Um, and now I've come to realize that, you know what, there are certain things that you might have wanted as a child that do not necessarily have to happen oh, as yes. an adult, mm, right? Mm. So we're walking the journey, me and this child, day by day. Um, there are certain instances where, for instance, I realize my excessive need for to buy sneakers mm. is because I never could get the sneakers that I wanted growing up because they were too expensive. The British Knights sneakers <laughs> that I wanted. Exactly. Now I've got over 200 sneakers. There we go. But I'm wearing the same five. Right. For the last two years. Right. That is me too. I'm like, I have a... I have favorite pairs of sneakers, but I have a house full of sneakers. Bought two motorbikes because when I was 15 and I could ride, my dad says, nope, I'm not getting you a, a Yamaha Y50. There we go. So I went and bought two bikes. Ex dad, I'm getting another one end of the year. I get you completely. <laughs> I absolutely get you. So you sort of have to be conscious of some of these things that are happening in your life. Um, and, and shame. She's... She's, I think she's doing well. Mm, she's mm. doing well. I'm trying to take care of her. And how are you as an adult dealing with unresolved hurts from your childhood? How's that going? So I've, I've had, I think about two years ago, mm. had to sit down with my parents. Yeah. And we worked out whatever it is that was done back then that had mm. hurt me, that was still hurting me. So now we are and, at a and, point. And that you hope that might acknowledge yes Nyana. and i think having had that conversation yeah. it was partly because i didn't want for me personally to repeat those same mistakes with sure. my children sure. but at the same time i didn't want them repeating those mistakes now with their grandchildren mm -hmm. right but even though um this conversation went off better than the initial one that i tried with my dad a good few years ago where mm -hmm. he didn't talk to me for an entire year for real yeah because what, for I, saying this is how you've hurt me. This is how you've hurt me. This is how being raised by you and the traumas that you had to deal with that you didn't want to deal with mm. that you subsequently then, you know, put on us affected me through my life. And because of those traumas, these are the life decisions that I made mm. trying to avoid certain things. Um, and this is the trajectory you've put me on, especially mm. when it comes to the type of men that I was dating, sure. that I was avoiding and so on and so forth. Because it all translates it all to translates. something. Exactly. So after that conversation, my dad was like, what the hell? I was like, oh. Well, so now that you're a woman, you have an opinion. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, so I'm being disrespectful <laughs> by telling you how the choices you made as a parent have affected me. Or telling you that the things you did made me feel a certain way. Yeah, yeah. No, and and I, that I might not be a fully functional uh, adult making decisions that are in my interest. Yes. Because I have a fire I'm still putting out from back then. Exactly. So having that conversation was very difficult, but it came with, you know, that repercussion of him not talking to me. Sure. But then after some time, my mom was like, listen, your children are going through therapy. Mm. So with going through therapy, there are certain conversations, difficult conversations sure. that need to be had. Mm. Therefore, he ended up going through therapy. Oh, that is so dope. You know what I mean? And and thanks, I appreciate... Thanks to his know-it-all daughter. You know what I mean? So thanks to not, not necessarily just me, but also yes. my mom having conversations sure. with him and making him realize that, you know what? 
your children saying these things is not being disrespectful. It's mm. also trying to help you sure. grow as a person mm. because it's never too late to grow. Mm. You're constantly on a journey of learning and unlearning to relearn. You know what I mean? Sure. So, and, and that's something that I've appreciated. Now I can actually have proper conversations with my dad. Who made the first call after that year of silence? Um, it was my mom, oddly, ah, yes. not even both of us. Mm. It was my mother who said, listen, uh, you two are going to be in each other's lives sure. for the rest of your lives. Mm. So it's either you make this work or you don't make it work. Sure. Because in that period, it was, it was very weird because I would go home and I'd walk in the house and he would walk out. Wow. Or if he walked in the room, I would walk out. Mm. The room. You know, mm. it was, it was so full of tension that my mother was like, I'm not living like this. Mm. So we ended up sitting down. And made peace. Because ultimately she bears the brunt of it. Of course. You know what of I mean? Course. You're her firstborn daughter, but yeah. also I share bed with this guy. Do you get what I mean? <laughs> God, between two people. <laughs> Would you recommend therapy for everyone? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. I really do. But I think the one thing I always advocate when it comes to therapy, mm. you have to be ready for it. Oh, yes. Because if you're not ready, you're literally mm. just going there to tick a box, but you're not going to get any, anything out of it. And ready looks like acknowledging that I need oh, help. yes. And taking accountability sure. for your own actions, sure. because that's another thing. Sometimes we are so quick to point to other people and say, this and that happened in my life because you did A, B, C, and D. Mm. What was the role that you played in mm. that particular situation? Yeah, because I'm at the stage now where I have a list of people I have to apologize to. I hope I'm one of them. Um, um, I'm, gonna do it. I'm actually going to do it here. The only reason I have you on my podcast is so I can apologize to you. Actually. Really? Yeah. Okay. But that's for later. Okay. If you remind me. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm at a stage where I've got a list of people that I need to apologize to. Okay. And even where I know I wasn't wrong yeah. in a certain, well, to a certain extent, mm -hmm. but because I caused hurt in return, yes. I must even apologize for that. Exactly. Because sometimes we lash out because someone started, like he poked me. Mm. So the fact that I poked them harder in my head didn't compute as I'm being wrong. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. That I shouldn't be dealing with it like that. Exactly. So I'm at a stage where I've got a long list of people I need to apologize to. And some names I keep skipping. <laughs> because I'm like, it's difficult. Because I'm like, you you fucked up, dog. <laughs> and I dealt with it. And yeah. I was wrong for dealing with it the way I did. I get you. And I need to acknowledge that. I get you. So it's, 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 it's a journey and a half. It is. Just like you're saying, saying that I was wrong here, let me apologize, let yeah. me atone. Yeah. Let me... <sighs> and it, it, it is quite uh, um, a difficult journey because like I say, you have to acknowledge the role you played because mm. there are times also when you've hurt people and it was unintended. Sure. And it's not for you to say, but I didn't mean to hurt you. Fact is someone was hurt. Absolutely. How then do we deal with that and take that forward? We're still uh, at childhood memories. <laughs> the one thing you got away with as a child that you still feel like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Can I keep this one to myself, no, please? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. We'll skip this one. One thing I got away with as a child yeah. that, but I'm sure they know, man. Because, I mean, I was in boarding school. Yeah. But for a good three years, every single weekend, I sneaked out of the boarding house, went home, stole the Merc, went partying. Five in the morning, pushed the Merc back into the garage, walked back to the boarding house. No one was none. Oh, they know. You think they know? Oh, they know. No, no, but dad would have known, no. No, 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 they know. They know. So? They're probably like, uh, you know what, he's at that age. There's been no accident or no, whatever. Not, not my dad. And also half of that time, and for most of the time, my mom was studying in the US anyway. Yeah. So she wouldn't have known. And my dad, like me, passes out. Okay. You know what I mean? So I would literally push the car out. Yeah. And then I'd almost like push start it. So while it's rolling down the driveway, because <laughs> <laughs> I can't start it. <laughs> and, and, and I think um, to my defense, yeah. it was a research for my career. Uh -huh. You see, because the career so? I took is exactly what I was chasing. I was chasing gigs. I was going clubbing. We were. I wasn't even drinking, dude. I wasn't drinking. I wasn't having sex. I was a good. So child. that was your excuse that it, you it were was preparing yourself. It was career research. You know how nowadays kids are on holiday and yeah. you must go job shadow someone. Yeah. I was job shadowing DJs. That is why. Did they know you were job shadowing them? I don't think they knew I wanted to be a DJ at that stage. They thought I was going to be a lawyer. 
So I couldn't say to them, I need to go clubbing. I'm yeah. 15, I'm 16, I'm 17. Yeah. But I had to make a plan. So. No, I get it. But did the DJs you were job shadowing know that you were job shadowing? Oh, no, no, no. They knew. They knew. Because okay. I was the kid that stood at the DJ box. Okay. I was the kid that would, would ask for a song. Yes. That was so annoying. So you were the kid with the, the cell phone that DJs nowadays don't really like because you're like front and center and then saying, play this next. Well, there were no cell phones at the time. But, but I was I'm just that saying kid. now, but in this also, nowadays. But also, I'd often go to a lot of these nightclubs as a flex to myself. Uh-huh. Because I knew how much music I had. Yes. So I wanted to see, are they playing the music I'm playing at my school discos? Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And often they weren't. Or I'd say, please play the, this remix of that song. They wouldn't have it. And I'd air punch to myself. You know what I mean? I'm impressed. So sometimes you need to flex to yourself. Yes. Just quietly. Yes. To know that you're on the right track. I get you. And that's I what I did. I get you completely. Do you ever look at broadcasts and you flex to yourself about how you would have done that better or oh, done yeah. it differently? I do that all the time. Uh-huh. <laughs> I do that all the time. Which is more. partly why I don't like watching television. Um, I'd rather watch the actual game that is going to happen. So I don't like watching build-ups. I don't like watching raps. Because you always feel like you can do something better. But at the same time, I'm very quick to acknowledge when someone has done something brilliant. Okay. And I will, you know, either send a message or if I'm on social media, I will big you up. Because great work is great work. I also get um, inspired by my fellow broadcasters. But yeah, it happens all the time. Even when it comes to watching just normal non-football, mm, right? Mm, mm. I'm always like... Continuity. Did no one see? Did oh no my gosh, that, that camera shot is just so terrible. Mm, so that's mm. why I no, I, I struggle with watching television. But how much ass did Mercedes kick though during the rugby right? World Cup? Right. You know, I sat there just beaming. She, and, and often I looked uh, forward to her yes. than I did to the matches. Yes. Because I knew that these guys are gonna have us having heart attacks. Yeah. They'll win by one point. And we know it. We know them for that. So I would look forward to Mercedes on the TV. No, she is phenomenal. I mean, there was one link outside of the World Cup. Yes. Um, the Springboks were playing. And uh, she did her opening in, I think it was four languages? Yeah. <sighs> Mercedes is unmatched, man. And you're live. You're on live TV. Mercedes is absolutely unmatched. She has set the bar so high mm. when it comes to rugby broadcasting for women especially sure. for black women mm. that any other woman who's going to get into that space shem good luck <laughs> well, Cerise, we love you you kick butt. she's amazing and uh yeah please we we, we need amazing. we need more levels of that yes excellence that Most we saw definitely. from her Most definitely. what do you think it is about i want to say our industry now yeah that you can't pick up the phone and tell someone that I would have done that differently and not in a bad way. Because for me, on radio, we used to be able to do that. Yeah. Especially during the YFM years. I would call uh, Thomas at the end of his show mm. and I'd tell him that, you know you messed that up, right? <laughs> and we'd laugh about it. It became our thing. Of course. And it, in fact, we became so close, myself and Thomas, doing that, that if he messed up a link, yeah. I would call him after the link and I'd just laugh down the phone. Then he'd know why I am laughing. Of course. And then he'd know where he messed up. Yes. And we held each other accountable like that. Is it not because now we don't see each other as compatriots, but rather as competitors? It's like we're competing. We are competing. And sadly, we're all competing for the same slice of the pie. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I've personally used to do it in the beginning where I would send a message and be like, Oh, you did this great. Well, this one, you know, just, and we discuss, right? Sure, sure. But then as time goes on, you realize that there are people you can do that with and there are people who take that personally. Oh, uh, yes, 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 um, yes. So now I'm very cognizant of not doing that with just anybody. Mm, we mm. have to be on a good, good footing. Like for instance, with Mercedes, I can pick up the phone and, and, and talk to her. Sure. Um, but there are people that I'm just like, ooh. Uh, uh, no. They'll take it personally. I'm not doing that. Or they'll also, say, you've been doing this for long. Do you now, get what I mean? Let me make do you get do what I mean? Yeah. Because... What saddens me is that even with the younger generation, mm. the ones that are coming in now, sure. even with them, you can't tell them. Can't anything. tell them anything. Yeah. You know, because they tell you, yeah, but you've been here, you've been doing mm. it, you had mm. your time. Mm. Mm. Let me do things my way. And it's like, I'm not saying do it like me. Sure. I'm just saying tweak here, tweak there. You can there. fix your way. Thank you. Even with me, I mean, till today, mm. if I get criticism from anyone and it's constructive criticism, sure. I will take it. Yeah. Because you never stop learning. Mm. You never stop growing. Mm. So I'm always on the chase for um, people telling me where sure. I went wrong. Sure. The the team, especially the men at Supersport, no. Any day, if I'm working with you pitch side, 
you are more than welcome to tell me when something was wrong. Mm. Perhaps if uh, something was factually incorrect, mm. will I will own up to that, mm. you know? And mm. and I have no issues with that. And you know, that's the one thing I miss about Bob Mabena. Oh yeah. Is when I was at Y, Bob once a week would send me a text about something I did that yeah. blew his mind. Yes. So I always knew that, okay, this is on the right track. So yeah. do more of that. Yes. And sometimes that's all a person in your industry needs. Of course. You don't have to be critical. Yeah. You can just say, yo, dude, the way you did that, yeah. do more of that. Exactly. Because even that is a crit. Of course. I mean, I remember um, doing a match. I think it was one of my first matches that mm, I did live. Mm. And in my ears was Oske Lezo, who was a an outside broadcast director at the time. Sure. Now she's a big wig at the SABC. Um, and she said to me, I see you're trying to do this, but you're overthinking it mm. because it's television. Sure. Do this like you're doing it on radio. Mm, mm. Be yourself, sure. have fun, and you'll be fine. Mm. So when you get somebody saying, no, this is what you're good at. Mm. Take that and just transplant it here. It's literally the same thing. Exactly. The only difference here is that people get to watch you. Mm. But be your animated, silly self, sure. and you'll be just fine. And a different manager w could have made it hurtful. Oh, of course. The exact same thing. Of course. Someone else could have just said no. Also, someone else could have just thought, because that... That translation from radio to television is sure. different. Absolutely. It's a different mentality. And yeah. some people don't get that. That there are certain things and certain ways that I would broadcast on radio mm. that I would not do on television. Mm. Similarly, the other way around. Mm. So if somebody understands that now you are you are so in your head sure. trying to translate one medium mm. onto another mm. and recognizes that no man. This person is struggling because of. Mm. Let me just nudge them in the right direction. Sure. Yeah. All right. <laughs> We're still talking childhood, by the way. Are we still on childhood? Okay, We're cool. still on childhood. Let's go. Your biggest childhood dream that is now your biggest box tick. Ooh. I think my biggest childhood dream was being a broadcaster. Mm. And to be celebrating 20 years in a business, thanks to you. <laughs> is huge. Me, I make I make people me me. me. I know about making I'm a people, people maker. but you open doors. You yeah. know. I mean, to think about how every time I I, I think about how I got into the industry, mm. I'm always just blown away mm. that all it took is just one phone call, right? Mm. During mm. the office challenge. I don't know if you even remember. Um, for those that are uh, uninitiated, so on uh, the Unrestricted Breakfast Show on YFM with myself and Tato, we had an office challenge. It was like a quiz. If you win, we bring you lunch to your office. Yes. And uh, Mpo is working at IBM. Yes. Uh, where is now the Discovery offices, right? That's the one. And uh, Mpo won lunch. You wanted Nando's, yes. I think. And, we took... and you said to me, what do you want? It said chicken. And she asked for Nando's. I was Nando's. like, well. <laughs> she forgot the Kool-Aid and the watermelon. I don't eat watermelon. You see, I would never have asked for that. I was going to get you cool, a watermelon-flavored Kool-Aid, just so we can stick to the black theme yeah. and the stereotypes. No. Yes. But anyway, so we, you know, we took them for lunch, and she became a member of the, the team. I became a friend of the show from being a friend of the show, and you were like, listen, Anissa is going to be, who was doing traffic at the time, Anissa is going to be off every single month for a week yeah. for some time because sure. she's going on training. Sure. For those weeks... Come that in and she's do not traffic. here. Come in and do traffic. And and I think one of the reasons I wanted you to come in uh, for Anissa and do the traffic is because, you know, like your former um, 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 manager. Uh, manager said, yeah. just be yourself. And I think your personality said to me, she will be perfect on the radio. Beca and remember how much flack you got in the beginning because I was too loud. I am. I always got flack for you. <laughs> I've never not gotten flack for you. And, and, and it's always worth... The thing is... You should be willing to back the horse that you talk about. Oh, yes. Don't just say, I want that and therefore. Yeah. But also you need to understand, though, that that breakfast show was built, one, on trust me. Oh, yes. Everything I wanted to do on that show, management were not interested. Yeah. And I had to say, trust me. Yes, yes. Because it was like, the very beginning. And they were like, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Show us. It'll work. Yeah. And... The and look at us history. now. Yeah. Look at us now. I mean, we did the same thing with uh, Fresh Breakfast. Yeah. You literally, when you were jumping ship from five, you said, Listen, I wasn't jumping ship. I you, was forced. Okay. When when you were thrown overboard. That's what it was. <laughs> no, no. That's literally what it was. Um, management bullied me into moving. 
So I remember you made the call and you said, listen, I'm moving over to mm. Metro. Mm. I want you to come do sport. And mm. I was like, at a union, I'm not sure. And you were like, trust me, this is going to be one of the mm. biggest breakfast shows. Mm. And still today, mm. people are still talking mm. about it. Mm. And the weird thing is, you know, you talk about your, your loudness. I remember one of our managers once came and she said, don't you think Kumpo is a bit loud? I remember they said, I laugh like I'm falling off a crate. Don't you think Kumpo is a bit too opinionated? <laughs> And I remember saying to our manager, that's precisely why I have her on the show. Because she's opinionated, because she's loud. What why does she bother your your chakra? <laughs> like I don't understand. Because it comes back to the initial conversation mm. we've had. Women are not meant to behave in particular ways. Mm, We're mm. put into boxes. Yes. And when you Carla, outside of that box, mm. you become a problem. And one of my biggest problems, remember I said earlier on, how did um, our culture let you down in terms of your marriage? And that's one of the biggest issues I've always had. That often in our culture, when we say, when you ask a man, so how are the children? It includes the wife. Yes. Yes. It includes the wife. Because women are treated as one of the children. That is insane. Cultur culturally. But yeah, it is what it is. And, and, and it's a conversation I had with my mom when I was about 14, 15, mm. and I started being more confident in the stuff I asked her. Yeah. That there's a lot of things I felt like, well, why are you letting this happen? Mm. You know what I mean? But it's because I guess like, you why felt must dad, why, why should dad sign off on you wanting to start a business? Mm. Which he refused to sign off on, that actually would have flown as a business. You know what I mean? So mm. for me at that stage, like I said, I was 15 and I was a bit rebellious. I, even, I remember there was a stage I even said to her, why don't you leave? And that is such a powerful thing to say. Why don't you leave? Mm. Because I have a friend who got divorced and he says the biggest driver to getting divorced is because his daughter said, you are so unhappy. Why are you still here? Mm. Mm. So sometimes your kids will tell you things that you don't want to hear. And instead of leaving, she instead decided to go study in the US. And I was like, mom, you're running away. Because it was probably a very difficult decision to make. She probably knew it deep down. Mm but was not ready to make that decision or didn't think she could. Cause that's another thing. Ever mm. since I've, I've been divorced, I've gotten so many emails from people who say I am in this marriage. It's not working for me. I want to mm. get out, but mm. I don't know where to start. Mm. Mm. And you know, I'm um, speaking about your friend's kids saying you look unhappy. Why don't mm. you leave? That's the conversation we had with the kids when we we're telling them that, listen, mom and dad are, are divorcing mm. that you as kids deserve two happy parents. Yeah. And if that happiness resides in us being apart, that's what it's going to be. Then so be it. But this thing of stay together for the kids often damages the kids. Oh, yes. Because they can tell mom is not happy. Oh, yes. They can tell that mom is not okay. Of course. They can tell that dad is miserable. Yes. But we expect them to hotel. But also coming outside of that, which is another thing that I've learned from uh, via my therapy mm. sessions, is that when you stay in a an unhappy union, be it a marriage, a fat and set, whatever you call it. Or even and, a job. Uh, or even a job. And your children are witnessing you going through this and you choosing, and I'm deliberately using the word choosing, choosing to stay in that environment that mm. is not conducive for you. Mm. You are actually teaching them mm. that they... Uh, they are not allowed the to choose tree. themselves. They can't move. Yes, they mm. are not allowed to choose themselves. They're not allowed to make decisions mm. that put them ahead of whatever. You know, mm. I'm, I mean, I'm cognizant of the fact that there are situations where it's very difficult to move. Sure. Like, for instance, if you, you don't just leave your job because you're unhappy, but Absolutely. you don't have another one mm. lined up. Mm. But if you have that ability to leave a situation that it no longer serves you, mm. don't teach your children that they must stay in an unhappy situation mm. because Absolutely. people will always talk. Mm. They'll talk because you're not leaving. Mm. <laughs> They'll talk because you left. Mm. So do what serves you. Absolutely. Yeah. So you're not going to answer the question. No. The one thing you got away with in no. your childhood that. <laughs> no. I am 43. I have meant, I've lived this long without <laughs> them knowing. No, I'm messing it up now. <laughs> Childhood lessons, good and bad, that you're trying not to repeat or you're going to replicate with your kids? Childhood lessons, good and bad. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, the, the, the good lessons that I do have from my childhood is how free, my, especially my mother, was mm. when it comes to conversations with us. Oh, yes. Right? Um, my mother was always the go-to person. When mm. you have an issue, she would not reprimand you for making a bad decision. In oh. fact, she encouraged yes, yes, you yes, making yes. 
your own decisions, you know, you will deal with the repercussions after. Mm. My other good lesson also comes from my mom. My mother has never hit us. Mm. My mother was not an advocate for violence. Yo, I knew her slipper. Do you get what I mean? I, so, I, I even got... Uh, uh, I want to break English. I even got thrown with a clog. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. So that's been the the best lesson with regards to my parenting. Learn to talk to your children. Treat them as the human beings they are. Mm, right. Mm. Um, even with being naughty. Sure. More often than not, th there's a reason for why they were naughty. Mm. Either it's because they've been asking you for this thing and you've been saying no and they sure. really want it because mm. my friends have it and I'm the mm. only one who mm. doesn't have it. So I'm going to take it anyway sure. and I'll deal with the repercussions after. Mm. Or whatever. It could be peer pressure. It could be whatever. But there is generally a reason behind why they did mm. something. Mm. The bad thing that I never want to do, I guess is ever be in a position to hit my kids mm. because I've always felt that at the point that you are pushing violence and I'm deliberately saying violence mm. is because you have lost the battle. Mm. So the same way that you would not hit a friend, hit a colleague, hit your boss because they've done you wrong. I know people that have, but anyway, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> what right do you have to hit children purely because you find yourself in a position of power? Yes. So, because that's all I see it as. Mm, you mm. being in a position of power, you feeling like you've lost your position of power. Sure. And therefore, the only way to exert that power is through violence. Mm, so, mm. we keep saying that we have a society that is very violent, mm. but we're not understanding the violence we are teaching within our homes. Absolutely. So, do not teach your kids violence. Don't normalize Don't normalize, normalize violence, violence, violence and then home. expect them to be nonviolent out there. Sure. That does not make sense. I've grown, ne? The way you're looking at me like, eh, hey, <laughs> uh, You know, when I met you, you were young, very, very uh, bushy-tailed. <laughs> yes, uh, wet behind the ears. <laughs> IT chick <laughs> that was ready to go on a road trip now. Yes, always. Now, now you're, always. This, uh, you're this mother, now I'm broadcaster, a, journalist. What do you want us to do? Okay, let me check my schedule. Absolutely. What is my child doing? Does that fit into my child's schedule? So I'm not the... Let's just go sure. type now. Now, many people don't know that you sing, that you sing nicely. That I used to sing. You've got a beautiful voice. That if, I used to sing. You Even if you stop broadcasting today, you'll always be a broadcaster. Um, many people won't even know that you did a song with my younger brother. Oh, yes. Uh, Afro Risen. Yes. Um, that was on, on one of my albums. Yes. So please take us back to your favorite song that you liked singing in your childhood. Yo, I think anything Brenda Farsi, um, mm -hmm. growing up, that was the thing. Um, but also, my parents used to like, um, what is her name? Not Cindy Lopa. Mm. Oh, I forget her name. Not Madonna. No, South African, colored. Uh, Not Ricardo. No. She, she, <laughs> yo, why is her name slipping my, my mind? But that was my... Not Vicky Sampson. No. Very old, very. Old. Ah, okay, okay. Um, that that was what I. Do used you remember to, the song? Can't remember mm -hmm. for some weird reason, but yeah, that was the artist I used to love singing back then. Mm -hmm. And then at some point there was twins, Shona Pante. You know, just that. Yes. You just sang it better than all of them. Oh, spicy song! Why is it oh, spicy song? Please don't come for me. <laughs> Had they used that on that song, would have sold even more. <laughs> no, no, it's the truth, though. <laughs> no, no, come, come, come on, guys. Let us be honest. <gasps> I loved twins. <gasps> and I loved twins because they were always good to me. I, I remember <gasps> I was a student and I used to always gym in Hillbrow. Yeah. At High Point. Yeah. And the twins were always lovely to me. Yes. You know what I mean? I was this 20-year-old new to Joburg. Yeah. The twins, they were good to me. Jonina was good to me. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Macheu, Oskido, Vinny. Christos, Bob Mabena. Yeah. I could list at least 20 people yeah. that treated me like gold mm -hmm. in my first three years here as a student. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But not once did I bother them and mm -hmm. say, I need this, I need that. I just mm -hmm. knew that I've got the allies, I can use them whenever. Yeah. All of that being said, can we talk about twins singing, guys? <laughs> and dizzy. I'm dizzy. Oh, man. Anyway. As you can tell, I'm not get you. I'm trying to get you to sing for us. No, I'm not going to sing. Why not? No, I don't sing. How about Tungpo? Only people who have the privilege of being in my personal space mm -hmm. have ever heard me sing. Now, ever hear me sing? Because that's the thing about my mom, and she says that of me and my sister. Mm. She knows we're happy. Sure. 
when we start singing. Oh, yeah. Because then I will sing even when I'm talking. I will sing a sentence mm -hmm. while I'm having conversation with you. So that's when she knows that I'm in a very good space. So when you start dating again, are you going to sing to him? Hmm. I sing all the time anyway, so he's ah, inevitably so he's, he's going in to he's hear in it. Trouble. Ah, he's going to hear it. And what's your favorite song currently to sing? Oh, I have too many, hey? Let's but, Luan Lungkulo, yeah. mm -hmm. that's mine. That's my jam. Don't stop. Let's go. Uh -uh. Let's go. No. no. Tell us more about this We're guy that is that. yours. He's out there mm -hmm. somewhere. <laughs> I must find him. What are you looking for in a new guy? I'm looking for kindness. A apart from someone who's willing to be a stepfather immediately. Well, because now we're dealing with that. But but at my age, I would also be stepmothering, would I not? I, well, per per perhaps. Yeah, generally. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I'm looking for kindness. Mm. I'm looking for someone who is willing to understand my crazy. Sure. Because my crazy is... And not dim it. And not dim my crazy. Mm. But I'm also... Isn't it wild that... The very thing that we fall in love with about a person is the very thing once we have them yeah. that we try to dim first. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Does it make sense? It is insane. I fell in love with this about you. Yeah. Can you do less of it? Yes. How does that make sense? It doesn't. Unless you're worried it's going to attract other people. That could be the reason. That could actually be the reason. But then at the same time, I feel like when it comes to dating, mm. our biggest problem generally is that we like to possess people oh yes you know because i'm dating you you are my property you mm. can't do mm. certain things that i love about you with mm. other people mm. you know how a guy will say is that wrong it depends mm. um for instance i find it weird when a guy will say i'm dating you and i see you talking to tato and mm. you are laughing your head off mm. what are you laughing about because you don't laugh like that when you're with me. Mm. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, because Tato knows which laugh buttons to press. I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> maybe, maybe learn a thing or two. Maybe call so, him. Call him and find out. Get some notes. <laughs> Take some notes, you know? But yeah, that is part of the issue that we like mm. to possess people. So what I'm looking for is someone who's kind, someone who gets my crazy, someone who is willing to walk this life journey with me mm. without feeling like they need to control me mm. and i'm the same you know i'm i'm at a point now where do you mm. do what makes you happy sure. as long as at the end of the day we are both cognizant and conscious of not hurting one another sure. through those choices that we make mm. but do you be happy because mm. when you are happy i am happy you know as you said you're a complete human being i'm a complete human being we just happen to come together mm. and make mm. an even more complete heart and things shouldn't get to a place where i have to hide things now oh yeah simply because you don't like the fact that i hang out with my boys i should have to hide the fact that i'm no unfortunately hanging out with the boys comes with the package so yeah. if you are very insecure somebody who's going to constantly feel like you need to be going through my phone mm -hmm. or, good luck to you it's like why did you like this person's picture you are going to die young <laughs> you are going to die young Sham. good luck to you and your heart <laughs> so now that there's five men left as potentials who are you hoping they are <laughs> I don't actually, especially in this industry, yeah. I would not go back to dating mm. in the entertainment industry. Sure. In the footballing fraternity, whatever. Kishab, give it like corporate men. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. <laughs> who has a large mine? There's people, <laughs> I've, I know a couple of guys who are mining gold in, yes. in the Middleburg area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think you wanna hook one me or two might be single. Okay. Uh, Might two, be. I, I need to double check. We haven't spoken in a while. Okay, thank you. Uh, two are polygamists, so there's still a aye, chance. Aye, aye, there. Aye, 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 aye. And Dude, you know what polygamy? At least you know where he is all the time. One. Two, you can take a break, man. And, and you. Uh, huh? Uh, huh? Mm. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> you know, can I tell you though? Yeah. Um, Funny, I was having this conversation with a friend of mine yesterday, and mm. I had said, I wouldn't mind polygamy. Sure. On one condition, mm. I, I need to have a house far away from your other person. No, but there's a compound for a reason. I don't do that. Okay, well, so one of that's that for okay. me is my break. Okay, either I'm here and they're in another province, or I'm in Joburg and they're in Pretoria. Joe, like a Christmas, you mm. must understand. You will have lunch at my house and you can go have dinner there. Okay, but we're not doing it together. So there's no happy family then. I don't play happy families. You wanted me; these are my terms. 
Ah. Yes. Okay, so those are your polygamy conditions. Those are my polygamy conditions. And I know a lot of polygamists are not going to go for that. So, hey. But it's also doable, though. It actually makes sense what you're saying. Hey. Don't, don't mess on my parade. No, it makes sense what you're saying. Because I know there's polygamists out there with a coal mine. I was like, hmm. <laughs> I'm in Middleburg. <laughs> Maybe this could work. This could work. Exactly. You never know. But no, no, actually, I don't like to share, man. Mm. I don't like to share. I like my person to be my person. Back to your childhood. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What did your parents do mm -hmm. in their marriage oh. that had you believe in love ah. as a child? <gasps> My parents have done so many things. They still do so many things mm. the right way. Like, sure. for instance, my, my parents date mm. till today. That is so dope. You that is so know? dope. They go on holidays together. Mm. They will... Humanati. Humanati, man. Yeah. Humanati. And As these, it should be. Bruh. Like, they've been together for over 40 years, and it's still so nice. You know, one of the biggest mistakes we make when we get married yeah. is it becomes a marriage yes. and a chore. And where the hell do we get that idea from? And, and we get into um, this almost autopilot yes, mode. Yes, yes. Where you start existing. Exactly. And half the time you exist in past each other. Yep. Because you're so worried about these little people. Yep. And often these little people are fine, actually. They're okay without we are, you. We are, we are, we're the problem. Exactly. We're, be, we're fussing over the little people, over this, over that. Yep. And we're living past each other. Yep. We're not in the moment. And then tomorrow we're like, oh, my marriage is over. Yeah. What happened? Yeah. <laughs> Because you've been a passenger the whole time. And I agree with you completely. In fact, you said to Rile Bohile, um on her show on Talk Radio 702 yeah. that you think things took a turn when you guys got married. Yes. And that had you not gotten married, you might still be together. And that was such a controversial point that I made because people just took it on another level. But, 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 but it's it, the truth. But it is true, though. Yes. That in your head, you might think I haven't changed. Yes. But you change. Your family change. Society the way, around the way you change. The girl is yes. treated by your family yes. changes. Exactly. So even if your partner as well yes. is okay with the status quo, mm. everyone else around him says, no, but married women don't do that. Exactly. Married men don't do this. And then you end as up there's a rule book. Do you get what I mean? As if there's a rule book. Do you get what I mean? So for me, I'm just always like, dude, just do you. Yeah. Do you. But anyway, the other thing that my parents have done so well, and, I, and I'm hoping that should I ever get into another serious relationship, mm. I will take into that. Mm. They talk about anything and everything, mm. right? There is no hiding of anything, sure. right? And, and, and also, specifically when it comes to money. So... Even with us growing up as kids, we knew what the budget was. Mm. So you knew that this month, this is what's in the budget. Sure. If you want something, you must wait mm. until it comes into the next sure. budget. Wait your turn. Do you get what I mean? Mm. So that also kept us as children mm. grounded. Because, hey, kids today, it's because I don't know month end. Yeah. You know? We, 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 and we have stopped turning, getting certain things for them into an occasion. Yes. You know, Something they, they you can, earn. Yes. They can say today, Dad, please give me a PlayStation 5 out of the blue. Tomorrow. It's Tomorrow. Done. Yeah. Like, that kid is not even passing at school. Mm. But you you got them what they want. Uh, uh, Lefika just started grade three and there's something he'd asked for. And I told him, let's see your marks at the end of first term. There we go. We've that stopped is your goal. having... Your goal is yes. first term. Yes. If you maintain your marks up to the end of first term, you will get what you want. There we go. But we've stopped doing that. Yeah. We we are just so... I don't know whether it's a level of guilt as well from, mm. from our parenting because we're hardly ever there because sure. we're constantly chasing this goal and that goal and that goal. Mm. So... You're trying to compensate. We're trying to compensate. Mm. So mm. when your kid comes and they want this... You just give it to them. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm. Is that our TV? I think our TV is making... It's been teka teking for a while. Our TV is making noise. Okay, but apparently they can't pick it up. Oh, so you can't pick it fine. up? Okay. No, but yeah, I think we'll... that they might pick up now. Nothing. Cool. Okay. Well, okay. Maybe I should smack it. We used to smack our TV and then the, <laughs> the color would come back. <laughs> <laughs> Smack it again and it becomes, you know, there was a time uh, our aerial was on the roof. Yeah. And I can remember what was big in the news at the time. And my dad was watching the news. I had to yeah. go up and uh, to hold the hold aerial it. and point it in the direction of the... Were you tall enough or just... No, no, I had jumped onto the roof. I knew how to jump onto our roof. Yeah. Because it's the same roof where after watching Mary Poppins, I tried to fly off the roof <laughs> with an umbrella. That same roof. 
Um, how many bones did you break? I didn't break any bones. My mom to this day doesn't understand how I've how only survived? dislocated my wrist once. And no, it wasn't with a bottle of lotion. I fell off a trampoline. But yeah, dislocated my, my wrist. Wow. So I was that kid. But anyway, yeah, so I've been the aerial boy. Where I'm on the roof pointing the aerial in the direction of the transmitter. Look at kids watching this and saying, what in the world so, are you guys talking so, about? So I know, I know about uh, yeah. having to hit a TV to make it work. <laughs> anyway, uh, quickly, let's talk about lessons. Yes. Lessons learned from childhood first. My biggest lesson from childhood is that I am capable of anything I put my mind to. Sure. You know, because I've, over the years, I, I, because I was that kid that was always academically driven, because mm. when you come home with a 98, you're told where's the other 2%. Yeah, it's not enough. Um, you know what I mean? It's not enough. So I'd always learned to set goals for myself mm. and try and hit them. And I think I've consistently been doing that. Mm. Mm. So that, that's been my biggest lesson. You know what the best feeling is? The best feeling is looking at your adult life yeah. and realizing how many boxes you've ticked oh, yeah. from things you spoke to the universe as a child. Yes. And often we never take stock of that. Outside of speaking to the universe, you know those moments where you would sit in your bedroom and you would fantasize and live out certain realities yes, in your head? Yes, yes, That's a form of manifestation and we never actually saw that. Absolutely. And now when you see yourself having either lived through that mm -hmm. or hitting those top, you're like, wow, I yeah. remember sitting thinking one day this is going to happen. Best feeling. Right? Yeah. No, I agree completely. Lessons from school. Lessons from school. Yeah. It's okay not to be the popular kid. Sure. Um, in school, because I was a nerd, I was never part of the popular crowd. Mm. And at some point you yearn for that. Yes. Um, but outside of that crew, you're just like, you know what? It's okay not to be one of the popular kids. Mm, mm. Lessons from working a nine to five. I can never do a nine to five ever again. <laughs> <laughs> That's my list. That's my big, it's not my vibe. <laughs> I like my time. <laughs> Lessons from being a broadcaster. Trust your instincts. Go with your instincts. Go with your gut. Um, and more than anything, enjoy every moment. Because broadcasting, anything you broadcast goes by so quickly. Mm. Like the time flies by. Even if it is a massive, massive game. Sure. It ends so quickly. Mm. Enjoy the moment. Mm. Yeah. Some might or might not know this. Living with alopecia. Living with alopecia. Lessons Ooh from that. Wee! Lessons from living with alopecia. What is alopecia, by the way? So alopecia is excessive hair loss. Okay. So when I fell pregnant, um, I, I I don't know whether it's the hormones, but also the stress I was going mm. through at the time, my hair started falling out ah, in clumps. Okay. And it just never grew back. Mm. Um, so I've had the opportunity to do transplants, but I'm just like, oh, mm. whatever. Mm. Um, but my biggest lesson with learning from that is that you're beautiful no matter what, mm. right? So mm. I'm very comfortable. And the one thing I remember, um, my, my son had once gone to the office with my sister, right? And one of my sister's colleagues said to him, your, your mother and your, sis and, and your aunt mm. look so alike. Mm. How can you tell them apart? And mm. he said, my mother's hair comes off. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's the wig. Yes. <laughs> Lessons before you got to where you are with the alopecia. Yeah. Having to get to that. Obviously, it's a stage. Yes. It's yes. a process. Yes. Um, it's making peace with it. Because sometimes mm. we hold on to the hair that is no longer there. Sure. So you have to make peace with that process. And, mm. and actually, more than anything, start looking at yourself. Sure. As the beautiful person that you are, mm. you know, your, your India Ari says, I'm not my hair, mm. but at the same time, we're told that hair is a woman's crown in glory. So, crown, yes. so it is, it is such a mind thing that you mm. have to move past. And once you get, and you make that peace, mm. then you're fine. So I'm, I'm, I, I'm bald. And I walk around bald mm. uh, in my house. Mm. I don't do it publicly because, sure. well, but outside of that, I, th I think you look beautiful. I mean, walking bald. I've posted mm. a few times mm. um, on Instagram with mm. my bald self. Mm. Mm. It is what it is. Surely the plus side to alopecia is you don't need to wax. <laughs> no? 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm a silver lining clouded guy. Yeah, yeah, there is that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Lessons from being in a marriage, lessons from being outside the marriage. Lessons from being in a marriage. Um, do the best that you can if that is where you really want to be. Mm. Um, work at it, sure. like we were saying. Work at it. So it don't is, be in it unless you're willing to fight for it. Don't be in it unless you're willing to fight for it. Okay. But at the same time, be be in those moments. You know, like make it make make an effort mm. to be in it. Sure. It is constant work. People mm. tend to feel as though we're dating, we're dating, we're dating, we're working towards this one goal, and then you get to this goal, and then hi, we're here now. We relax. We're on mm. autopilot. <clears throat> Don't do that to your relationship. Still go out on those um, date nights. Have fun with one another mm. because it is still a relationship at the end of the day. Mm. And there's no one else that you're accountable to except yourself. Absolutely. Live according to your own rules. Rules sure. that make sense to you. Mm. But also, it's okay to fight for one another mm. because that's another thing that we sometimes don't do. Sure. Your in-laws or whoever says this about your partner and you just let it slide. And your job is to protect your partner. Protect your partner. From every attack. From every attack. Inside Anyone and, and everyone. Yes. Once you are a tight unit, mm. nothing can infiltrate you. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think family eventually realize that maybe we're wasting our time here. Exactly. But and they if, leave you alone. But if you capitulate and once in a while, you're like, okay, no, no. Nah. It's the same thing with being a parent. Yeah. When your kids realize that we can't play off the parents against each yes. other, they'll stop doing There's it. There's no good cop, bad cop here. Yeah. Exactly. We're a unit. Exactly. Yeah. It's the yeah. same thing. And, 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 and Lefika, I think at some stage... Um, thought he could do that with me. Yeah. Uh, so now nowadays, if he comes and asks me if he can do something, there we go. I know it's because his mom said no. <laughs> you see. So I always ask him, "What did your mom say?" <laughs> and I'll tell him, "Your mom speaks on behalf of us." You see. And that is the answer. And they learn. Yeah. They learn. Lessons outside of. Now I'm not in a marriage anymore. What was the lesson there? Um, I'm actually an amazing human being. Mm. I am an amazing human being. An amazing. I can attest. She's been. <laughs> she's been an amazing human being for twenty years. But also, I'm an amazing partner. Mm. Uh, and, and, and this is something So, Jolecha. Yeah, Jolecha, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's been my biggest thing. Because at, at some point, I, I, I questioned my partnering skills. Mm. Um, because another thing I learned through therapy is that I, I tend to overcompensate in my love. Oh, yes. Because I had grown up are we constantly seeing, are we seeing the same therapist uh, probably not. you know i overcompensate in relationships because i had constantly sought um acceptance and validation from my parents oh, yes. so when i get into relationships i tend to overcompensate mm. because oh this person is validating me so sure. let me go all out mm. um and so you want to be an a student even in the relationship do you get what i mean <laughs> yeah, yeah so yeah I've, I've had to learn to tone things down and not rush into things mm. and just be Mm. Just be. Lessons from the current Bafana Bafana team. So by the time this goes out on Friday, either Bafana will be going to play the final yes. or they'll be out of AFCON. Yes. The biggest lesson that I think right now... In fact, now, we want a prediction from you. This is going to play after the match. Okay. What is your prediction, Bafana Nigeria? Um, Bafana Bafana is definitely going to the final. In fact, I I, think, I agree with you. I think if there is ever a year that we're going to win it, it's yes. this year. Yes. Um, but the biggest lesson that we can learn from this is consistency. Consistency, guys, is everything. You cannot become good at something if you're not putting in your 10,000 hours. And you know, we can say all the rubbish we want about Bafana. Yeah. But if you've been watching them under Hugo Bros, yeah. you would know that they've been building. Exactly. They've been consistent. Exactly. They've been building, racking up the hours, learning one another. There we go. And there's a solid team because of that. Exactly. But because we're fair weather supporters, we come in at the end day. <laughs> And we want miracles. We, we, once that winning, we're like, oh, fun, fun. <laughs> but you don't know how many teams they've been beating all this time. Exactly. Or that they've only lost, what, maybe twice? Yeah. Under Hugo yeah. Bruce? Yeah. It's only twice? Yeah. But we don't know that because we stopped supporting them. Exactly. But that's the one thing I've loved. Because there was a point where... No one knew who was part of Bafana Bafana. Yeah. Because we changed. I'm learning them right now. I'm, I'm we chopped them and changed right so often. Yeah. But over the past year, at least, if not two years, we've been so consistent. Sure. And I and I'm yes, he is a bit abrasive at times. Mm. But I love that he protects his players. He oh, protects yes. his stance. If he makes a decision, he sticks to it. Mm. Even if the media says it's the worst decision to make, mm. he sticks to it. Mm. So that's been the biggest lesson. Make your decisions, stick to them, be consistent, do your 10,000 hours. You might just find yourself winning in life. And finally, the biggest lesson 
that Paul Maboy has learned from her life? My biggest lesson lately mm. has been that I will always be that person that ruffles feathers. Mm. And in the beginning, I used to not be okay with it because I wanted to be liked. I don't care anymore. And did you find sometimes you audit yourself too oh, harshly? Yes. Oh, yes. And you second guess things you might say. Oh, yes. you're like, what if it's... Oh, yes. And you can't live like that. I can't live like that. And I, I think I'm, I'm finally okay mm. with who I am. Sure. I have grown into my skin. And mm. if you like me, hallelujah. If mm. you don't like me, that's okay too. That's still okay. Not exactly. everyone's going to like me. Exactly. Yeah. Feels good? Ah, it's amazing. I am, I'm loving this face. No, you, you're looking. <laughs> if I didn't know you, I'd say you're pregnant. <laughs> the way you're just radiating. No. When I radiate, say, hey, hey, you have a break. There's no children here. Are you done with kids? I'm, I'm, you are. I'm done. What if you meet someone who's ready for one more? Good for him. It's weird. I'm ready for one more. It's, it's, it's the weirdest thing. It's the weirdest thing. But that's the thing about men. I mean, just the other day, weren't we celebrating Al Pacino? With like a one-year-old or a two-year-old or something. He's 80. Yeah, he's 83, 4, 5. Oh, guys. I know. No, I don't, I don't know. If I've, I I've got a friend who is 62. He has a three-year-old. He's got a COVID baby. It's like, dude, it was COVID. You had all the time in the world to pull out. Some of us were working during COVID, so there was no time for that. <laughs> it's like, dude, you're 62. You have a three-year-old. I, no. I, I don't see myself pushing a pregnancy at my age, a geriatric pregnancy at that, because that's what it is at my age. You'll be fine, dude. And and there's the cliche in our forties, the new thirty. So you're fine. Okay, um, so we're making a deal right now in yeah. front of everybody. Uh -huh. If I fall pregnant, you are taking care of that baby because you said. If you fall pregnant before we do, yeah. If if, God, if I can find a womb, who's we? If I find a womb for rent, I'm still looking for for a womb for rent. <laughs> okay, who's the we you're talking about? The day I decide to, yeah. Oh, that's fine. You can announce it now. It's okay. People. So if you go before me, I will look after the child. So we, when uh, we, mm. that I'm talking to you. If you make a baby before we'll me. We'll hand it over to me. Okay, sure. Then I won't have my own. Okay. So, so please don't fight him. Oh, yeah. See? Another lesson. F1 yeah. has been a mess. There's been a lot F1-wise. F1. Oh, F1 eh? What lessons are you picking up there? Eh... Uh, that when people love you, they will go, they will follow you to the ends of the world. I am Ferrari from 2025. So, so, so Lewis literally told you, I'm yes. doing what makes me happy right now. Yes, yes. But also he's following his childhood dream. Yes. So Every child's dream. Every child in Eldos has a Ferrari sticker on their Golf 1. Yes, because Ferrari is the epitome of Formula 1. The epitome. The epitome, the you know epitome. what I mean? So, uh, so, from, so we're all Ferrari next year. Hey, hey, I need to go buy some Ferrari regalia. You know that caps cost way more than the I know, the Merc right? Caps. The Merc cap is almost too grand. <laughs> right. I'm sure the Ferrari cap will cost a bit more. Uh, I know the marketing guy or the marketing lady at Ferrari, so... Maybe. So we're rocking. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I love the most about you? Yeah. Is that you've been unapologetically you for as long as I've known you. And a lot of people might find you abrasive or atella or you've got a big mouth. But that's, All those are true. But that's what I fell in love <laughs> about you. Well, that's one of the reasons I said, when Anissa can't do traffic, yeah. this woman is going to do traffic. Yeah. Despite the pushback of management at YFM, I refused. Yeah. Even when they said they don't want Tato on the radio because they don't know him. I was like, trust me, Tato is going to kick ass. Just let him be on the radio. And I will forever be appreciative of that. No, man. Uh, I take money. I don't want to thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's the reason I fell in love with the person that you are. And I felt this person has to be on a radio station. Little did I know one of your, you know, one of your dreams as a child was to be a broadcaster. You know what I mean? Mm. So I think carry on being unapologetic. It's, 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 it's brought you this far. Yeah. And those that don't like you were never going to like you anyway. They'd find that something else. That is true. That is very if true. If a person doesn't like the person that you are, yeah. they will find something else to dislike about you. That's true. If you ever fixed that. That's true. You know That's what I mean? True. So please carry on being selfish, oh, man. thank you. You don't want to be on your deathbed on some... I should have done this. I should have told that one to Fotek. I should have bought the Ferrari. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think continue living your life, man. Thank you. You've done that and you've done that well. Thank you. Yeah. Aluta continue. The looting will continue. It's an election year. <laughs> it's an election year. 
And uh, after we have a new government, the looting will continue. Go live out, love it. Unfortunately. 2008, yes. I remember very clearly you said yeah. you're not voting. What are your views right now about elections? Uh, I was still young. Yeah. Uh, and and I, actually, yeah, anyway. Um, right now, I really am urging the young people to go out in their numbers and vote. Because at the end of the day, mm. Bonghono, the older ladies, they are ready to mm. go out in their numbers and vote. And, and, we know, and we know where they are going. You know what I mean? And the status quo then will continue. Mm. Um, so if you want to see change, mm. the power lies with you, mm. right? So I'm, I'm urging you to go out there in your numbers, vote for whoever you choose to vote mm. for. Um, but, but, but vote. This is the year. As the saying goes, nothing changes if nothing changes. True. Oh, yeah. I said I brought you here because I wanted to apologize to you. Yes. Yeah. So, um, do I start now? Go ahead. Dorisha says, yes. Hey, oh, I'm apologize. waiting. I'm red. Okay. So, for, for those that don't know, I used to do um, sport on my show at Metro. And we had contract negotiations. So, I was not aware that they had not told you that they're not going to renew your contract. Yeah. But I feel I didn't fight for you as much as I should have. And I think I owe you an apology for that. I was upset with you for a while, to be honest with you. And and I don't blame you. And yeah. I don't blame you at all. Yeah. Because on the day. Exactly. Go so good. On so good. You mind your own business. And I came <laughs> and I courted you. I gave you 10 children. <laughs> now, like... And then you left me with no maintenance. Like, who's going to look after these children now? <laughs> so, from the bottom of my heart, I know they treated you like rubbish. But I think I was part of the problem by not fighting for you. And for that, I apologize. Apology accepted. And it's... it's, it's, it's when I remember, don't leave me hanging. I remember when you told me on the Friday that they're passing the buck, they're saying it's management, or mm. they're saying it's sports, mm. Mm. they're saying it's this. But they told you on the Friday. Oh yeah. That Monday. Over the phone. That Monday you're not on the radio Over anymore. Over the phone. You know when I found that out, I cried. But you know, to be honest with you, I just feel like, on some level. I feel at the time there was a systemic move to get rid of fresh breakfast because in hindsight, I think it was getting bigger than the station. And, they were pick and the way they were picking on us individually. Yes. I remember there was a time we did an event. We did an event for our listeners and we're called in for disciplinary. You know, Mpo got a letter that says, tell us why you must not be suspended. Yeah. Mpo had nothing to do with the party. <laughs> That's when I realized that someone is out to get you. Yeah. No well, shame. But you know what? It is what it is. It, it, it was something that had to happen at that particular point mm. for me to be where I am right now. Mm. Um, but also to learn that in this industry, you're not, you're not indispensable. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, so when you do have that chance to do whatever it is that you do, do mm. it to the best of your abilities. And keep it moving, man. Mm, keep mm. it moving. And if you're memorable enough and impactful enough, the ball will continue to always, roll. Always, always, always. Those that support you will find you. That's true. And the job and the work will find you. Yes. So don't and be it helps to not change your number every six months. Also that helps. <laughs> and there's a saying, you can be a butterfly and flutter all over the place, or you can be a flower and attract all the butterflies. This is a flower, ladies and gentlemen. When a man. Hey? What? the poet okay <laughs> sorry i'm being yelled at uh, what do i need to do are we wrapping up sorry that's shouting at us having, wrap up. we're having too much fun we're having way too much fun and it's a reunion and i think and they're I jealous yeah, yeah you guys are jealous yeah, yeah. jealousy <laughs> hmm. anyway <laughs> where can we catch you doing what nowadays um, I am on Kaya 959 Breakfast with Cizwe and Sol. And you're sounding good. Thank you. You'd never, ever not sound good. <laughs> not forgetting Fundo Mabelani, who does news for us. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where I am, 6 to 9, Monday to Friday. On every other day, you can catch me on Supersport. Mm. Um, that's where I do football, mainly mm. broadcasting. Super picks mm. on Tuesdays, mm. um, also on Supersport. Um, you, do, you do car stuff also? I do car stars for infrared.co.za. People keep thinking I'm buying cars. No. Bang, bang, bolegi. Even the day she buys it, she will never tell us. And it's okay. never Leba loi, leba loi. Never, ever, ever tell people what you're doing or what you're buying. Baloi, was sat down. But I'm also launching my own podcast very soon. I'm hoping you'll be a guest. Uh, only if I'm your first guest. Or is that done already? Yeah, the first episode is done. Mm. Yeah, but but I want you to be a guest. Where do we catch the podcast? What's it called? It's going to be on YouTube, uh, Conversations with Mpo. Mm -hmm. It's mainly around 
the process of divorce, having gone through it, the one thing I realized is mm. that it's a very, very lonely journey. Yeah. And I'm trying to just em just empower people to not necessarily go through the journey by mm. themselves, mm. but just give information, share information of people who've gone through the journey, mm. what they're going through and so on and so forth. In fact, I don't I'll, want to give too much away. I'll come and talk about the nesting side of divorce. Because we, we divorced, but we lived together for three years. There we go. And, for, and for a lot of black people, that's apparently unusual. That is. And, and whereas for us, it was like, we're not fighting, so what's the problem? That is very interesting. No, we lived together for three years. Oh, you definitely need to be a guest. You see, so show. I'll come and talk about the Please. the positives of nesting and the yes. other side of nesting. Of course. You know what I mean? Oh, um, That's what I'll talk about wow. on the podcast. Okay. Yeah, so if no. you want to know about the ins and outs of nesting, catch yes. me on Mpoza podcast. Done. Uh, when is it up? When is the first episode up? Uh, we haven't decided on a final date as okay. yet, but I will definitely put it out on my different social media platforms. I can't wait. Can we, I can't wait to be your guest. Done. Yo, I have a lot to say. Yo, <laughs> I have a lot to say. You, you know what sucks the most, though? Yeah. Is how once it's over, but the public catch wind of it like a year or two right? later. And then it's a big deal again. Right. When you've moved on. And you're like, like he needs it. But it is what it is. But you're like, then it's treated like it's like this big news, Bruh. like breaking news. Like, no, the courts knew years ago. Uh, bruh. You know what I mean? Uh, it is what it is. How difficult was it doing the paperwork of changing your surname? <sighs> <laughs> Can I tell you, just last week, yeah. I was actually so annoyed. Yeah. Just last week, my license is uh, expiring. Sure. And I had to go and renew it. And because I've reverted back to my maiden surname, mm. I was like, but guys, how must I inform you that mm. I've changed surnames? Exactly. And, uh, you are, guys, you. Ninga shati. But the bank cards are sorted. Ninga shati. Yeah, I just leave it like, guys, jolang, jolang, jolang. <laughs> But shut it down. <laughs> no, shut, Before please. marriage. Just shut it down. <laughs> I'm joking. Marriage is a beautiful institution. When yeah. done right. But that's why it's called an institution. Like a mental institution. Because when you go mad, you go mad. Eh? That's why they're both institutions. Anyway, we're done. Listen, you can tell I miss her, man. You can tell I miss her. And I don't want her to leave. But management is shouting. So. Dude, I love you. I love you I love too. you with all my heart. Like, I love everything about you who you are what you are and to see you grow from the tomboy that you were when i met you because you were one of us like you're so tomboy i'm still one of you guys i just happen to wear a dress now you know Paul invited us over to a little flat just to play playstation <laughs> you're such a boy <laughs> i still am a boy i still play playstation no but just to see the feminine side of you that you know over the last five six seven years that is just i'm like oh there's a girl here. <laughs> the butterfly has come out of the cocoon. Yes, indeed. I was like, I now know why she was, she boy zoned us. <laughs> We're not a block. <laughs> I still love being a boy though. Oh man. It's fun. But I think you girl better than boy. So. I enjoy both sides of the coin. Mm. So how do you identify? <laughs> Bye bye. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mpo, my boy is about to leave the building. I love you, dude. I love you too. And thanks for coming in. <laughs> thank and you for having me. And thanks for accepting my apology. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. And thank you for apologizing. That mm. really means a lot to me. Glad to be in public. Yeah. Like I said, but I'm also I'm on an, an apology tour. Yes. You know, Taylor Swift is back on the road. Oh, yeah. Making a billion rand per show. I'm apologizing for zero rand, which is also okay. <laughs> Oh, man. Do you have a Valentine for this month? No, I don't do Valentine. At all? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Valentine's again when I was high school, guys. Hmm? Leave it to the high school kids to share the chocolate. And that is how people that don't want to spend a cent on you <laughs> will tell you about Valentine's. It's for school. We're barely into February, but it feels like the year is rushing ahead. You might be coping with a new grade, a new level of college, a new job, or even an old job with new hassles. Whichever situation it is, we wish you the joy of musician Tyler and of the entire colored community for how they feel about how they're represented this past weekend by our goalkeeper, our comedian, and by our singer. The confidence of a politician, even after saying something silly about clothing choices, and the robust energy of South African goalie and captain Ronwin Williams. So have you all a wow week ahead. We've been coming live to you from Discover TV. Um, I hope you like Discover TV. I do. Uh, they let us use the lovely many, many screens and TVs that they can't throw away because clearly they're hoarders. We're part of the Africa Podcast Network. Shout out to Pezulu Works for the cinematography, audio engineer, and our imaging specialist, artist, the Flo Fraser. Our guest, my boy, my boy, 
creative producer Kravesh Mohan, show producer Kilis Omudisa Gang. Please email us at waw at africapodcastnetwork.com. Till next week, have a great week in spite of yourselves. <laughs>